Hi, welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Adventures. I'm Morton, LB0 Fox India. And today's going to be a different style of video, more of a vlog style of video where I talk about a couple of things because I want to talk about LoRa APRS and how I've set everything up. And I use three devices today. First of all, I use this Lilligo T Deck uh, as my primary tracker. Um, that is the tracker I use. I've had that for about a week now, and it's definitely a whole lot better than the T Beam I used to use as a tracker. Then I have a Digipeter and iGate up and running at home. Um, and I'm going to show you an overlay of a picture here because that's up in my attic and it's right beneath a hornet's nest. So I don't want to fiddle up there more than I have to. But for that, I use a LoRa 32 board, which is uh, also made by Lilligo. It's probably one of the cheapest LoRa devices you can get. There's no GPS to it, no battery built in. But you don't need that. It's just powered by a USB power supply up there. And um, since it's a stationary device, it's set up permanently with the location and the grid coordinates uh, set up in the device. If you want to know how to set up these devices, both me and Bob LB5JJ has got a couple of videos on how to set up your LoRa trackers and eye gates. And the third device I have up and running um, it's a, just a digipeter um, that's running at the club station, um, running with the club call sign there. I just set that up today, and while I was doing that, I took a bit of a drive in order to see just um, what kind of coverage I can get in my area. But back to that little digipeter there, that's a T-beam, a little go T-beam. And don't worry, there'll be links down below to all of these products. Um, the T-Beam is a simple device, can be used both as a tracker, it's got a GPS, although not a very good one. And like I'm doing now, using it as a digipeter. It can also be used as an eye gate, uh, but there is no internet access at the club station, so that's why it's set up as a digipeter only. And hopefully, uh, I haven't tested that properly yet, they'll reach my antenna, which is up on the roof right up there. So, antenna-wise, the... Um, uh, T deck here is just using the stock antenna at the moment. Um, not really sure if I need anything else. I used it with my antenna on top of my car, uh, my mag mount antenna, while testing the range here. So, um, just in order to get a little bit more gain and an outside antenna. Um, the Digipeter I gate at home is running on a Diamond X50. And the uh, Digipeter down at the club station is running at a diamond something. I'm not sure what that diamond antenna is. I repurposed, a, I repurposed an unused antenna at the club station. Um, so hopefully they'll do a little bit of coverage in this area. Uh, my Digipeter has pretty good coverage. I can see that I'm, I'm spotted and I'm seen by stations that are up to 180, 200 kilometers away. And with 100 milliwatts, that's not half bad. In addition to those three devices, I also have a Lilligo T-Echo here, which is a pretty good device. But you got to be a little bit careful with this one when you flash it. Uh, first, I set up a firmware made by a German ham. I'm not, I can't really remember his call sign or what the firmware is called. But um, that firmware worked perfectly. It was a little bit of a hassle to set up. I got a video on this one as well with that firmware. But when it's up and running, it works. But then Ricardo Gusman, who makes the firmware for most of those Lilligo devices, asked if I wanted to beta test this device. And uh, tried to flash that on this one and I bricked it. So that's why I'm saying you got to be a little bit more careful with the T-Echo. The T-Echo is a great device. It's got a beautiful e-paper screen, as you can see here. So even though it doesn't have a charge, even though it's bricked, it'll still show what was on the screen the last time. So back to testing this. I, As I said, I went for a little bit of a drive today. Um, first of all, to just drive down to the club station and set up the Digipeter there. But at the same time, I took the... T-Echo connected to my antenna on my car and just tracked it a little bit and I'll overlay a couple of different screenshots of the APRS map while I did that. Um, 
the first picture you can see here, um, the reason it doesn't track all the way at home, you'll see that when the final picture arrives, is just because I didn't wait until it had a GPS fix before um, I started driving. Um, really good coverage for the, I'm guessing about 10 kilometers down there, uh, worked really fine after I did that. And there's another hand pulling into my driveway behind me now, so I might need to do a little bit of a break here. Um, then I took a drive around town and uh, to a POTA spot. Perfect coverage there, except for a couple of spots uh, due to some topographical and geographical issues. Um, had pretty good coverage. Uh, hoping we can get a little bit of a fill in Digipeter Eyegate just to fill those places. Basically, it's at the bottom of a steep hill and um, the, all the antennas are on top of that steep hill. So. Um, the close range coverage there isn't pretty good. Uh, then I drove to a POTA spot, had coverage almost all the way there, uh, which is a little bit to my west here, uh, about two kilometers to my west, so I wasn't really surprised by that. And we've all been there when other hams drop by and things take a little bit longer. So I'm going to try to continue my train of thought. Um, the Poda spot, as I was talking about, was about two kilometers west of me. So no surprises there. Then I drove south for about 10 kilometers and I lost coverage pretty quickly. Um, mostly due to the fact that topography and... Uh, vegetation isn't at an advantage for 70 centimeters and low power. Uh, a lot of forest and uh, a lot of hills. So uh, lost coverage there. Uh, gained coverage about five kilometers south of me. So what I can deduce or what I can deduct from this tracking little unscientifically done tracking test I did was that I got coverage at least about 10 to 15 kilometers north of me and about five kilometers south of me. Um, pretty happy with that, actually. So that kind of concludes my little talk about LoRa and the devices. I could go through and show how it works. I'm not going to do that now. If you guys want to see how these devices work, it's pretty simple. I'd recommend you to find a device that's supported by the Ricardo Guzman firmware. Uh, both me and LB5JJ got some videos on how to flash the devices. Those are definitely the easiest devices to set up. Other devices such as this one um, takes a little bit more work. The Ricardo Guzman uh, devices just simply work and they work every time. So um, those are the devices you should get. If you want to take a look at one of those devices, you can find them down below. Um, there's affiliate links for all of those from AliExpress. And I guess this concludes my short talk on how I use LoRa APRS. I think LoRa APRS is cool because it's low power and relatively great range for the low power. If you're in somewhere where this is legal to use, it might not be legal everywhere since it's a bronze bed in mode uh, on 70 centimeters. But if it's legal where you are, I'd certainly recommend you to take a look at it. That's it for now. Hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more content like this, or if you've seen my channel and want to see more of my content in general, do consider subscribing and leave a comment down below. I really appreciate that. I always take, I've always taken pride in answering every comment. That doesn't really happen that much anymore. I try to answer most of the comments, but the volume of comments on my channel has gone up quite a bit. Anyhow, see you down the mans. See you in my next video. I'm Morten, LB0 Fox India. You're watching LB0 Fox India Norwegian Adventures 7-3.